Today we're talking about the time that America wanted to nuke the moon. But first, this video is brought to you by JX Tactical. They make a holster for everybody. Everybody. For example, I look like one of the anonymous henchmen from the Spy Kids movies, so I prefer their trademarked fat guy holster. So if you have a body and you're looking for a holster, I would recommend JX Tactical. Okay, back to the story. Ladies and gentlemen, almost one decade before Neil Armstrong would take one giant leap for mankind, America almost made one giant yeet out of spite. You see, it all started on October 4th, 1957, when the Soviet Union launched the world's first satellite, Sputnik 1. And because they did it before America, America pretty much lost all of its chill. This would come to be known as the Sputnik Crisis. America would pretty much immediately found NASA as well as DARPA. And a short four months later, on January 28th, 1958, they would put their first satellite into outer space, known as Explorer 1. Sure, getting your country's first satellite into outer space in like four months is pretty impressive. However, it was the second satellite in outer space, which means nobody cares. If you ain't first, you're last. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Even though America had made great strides in the space race, as far as the world was concerned, they were still losing. So America had to do something to change their mind, something to get the spotlight back on America and also scare the Soviet Union. So they asked the United States Air Force what they thought. And their first suggestion was to nuke the moon and make a mushroom cloud so big that you could see it from Earth. You know, you can't lose a race to the moon if there is no moon. That's just math. So just so we're all on the same page, the United States government asked the Air Force what they should do about this problem. And the United States Air Force took a moment to think. They looked at the Soviet Union, saw that they were going to land on the moon first, and then looked up at the moon and said, So you have chosen death. Just for the sake of clarity, they didn't want to like blow the moon up like the moon would be gone, but they did want a new crater that you could see from Earth. And this is the part where I want to tell you the government came back and said, that's ridiculous, we're not doing that, and that was the end of it. Nah. That's not what happened. Instead, they gathered 10 of the world's best scientists and began work on what is now known as Project A119. You know, they really wanted to hit that sweet spot between creating a big enough mushroom cloud and not yeeting the moon out of the Earth's orbit, subsequently killing everyone. Okay, so the smart guys did all the math and all the thinking, and the official plan they came up with, if they were going to go through with it, was they were going to take the W25 warhead, stick it on an ICBM, and launch it at the moon. Buh! ICBM stands for Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, and the moon isn't a continent, so that doesn't work. Buh. Fine, you know what? I hereby declare the moon is the eighth continent of the planet Earth, and I hereby assign Brandon Herrera to rule over it. There, you happy? Moving on. All right, so the scientists got this whole mission figured out, and they were ready to go. Thankfully, they decided not to do it. There's a plethora of potential reasons, and they never actually said why for sure. So I'm just going to rattle some of those off. One, there was a fear that the general public would be pretty pissed off. Two, there was a fear that if the rocket malfunctioned before it broke the atmosphere, it would plummet back down to Earth and detonate. Three, they didn't want to contaminate the moon with radiation to prevent any future missions. Four, at this point in time, they still thought there might be a potential for cellular life on the moon, and if there was, they didn't want to kill it. And five, and what I think to be the most likely reason, due to the lack of atmosphere, the nuclear bomb would not actually generate a mushroom cloud, it would just be a flash. Personally, I like to think as soon as the Air Force heard that, they declared the whole idea lame and destroyed all the evidence and moved on with life. Or so they thought. You see, they destroyed most of the evidence. You see, all this work was done on eight separate research papers, seven of them were destroyed, one of them survived. But nobody would have ever found it if it wasn't for the fact that of the ten scientists that did all this work, one of them was actually a graduate student by the name of Carl Sagan. If you don't know who that is, he would go on to become a pretty big deal in the science community and become very famous. Famous enough to have a biography, and when the author of that biography was doing research, they stumbled across an application for a scholarship to UC Berkeley where Carl Sagan mentioned this project. I'm not gonna lie, I really want to see that application. Like Eagle Scout, 500 hours of volunteer service, I had an internship with the DOD to blow up the fucking moon. And why was this guy applying for scholarships anyways? He's one of 10 people on the planet you trust to shoot a nuke at the moon and you're not going to throw him a bone so he can finish out his doctorate? Anyways, this scholarship application would lead to a Freedom of Information Act request and the one surviving research paper from Project A119 would be released to the public in the early 2000s. And this is the part where I'm supposed to tell you do not mess with America because we are crazy enough to blow up the moon and potentially endanger all of mankind just to prove a point. And that's exactly what I would say if it wasn't for the fact that in 2010 the former Soviet Union, now in a hurry government, released their secret documents basically saying they plan to do the exact same thing. It is truly an utter miracle that mankind made it through the Cold War. I guess the silver lining is that we've advanced enough as a species to quit doing dumb shit with nuclear warheads. <laughs> give, me the, give me the fast way. The fast way is, is drop thermonuclear weapons over the poles. God damn it. Okay, well, thanks for watching, I guess. Go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang, out.